Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, Episode 75. On this episode of the podcast, Jen responds to a listener's question about job interviews and how to increase one's chance of success. Here is Jen's interview with Anna Payton. Anna, who is now retired from a 40-year career with a large telecommunications company in Western Canada, spent much of her career in the human resources sector and has extensive experience and knowledge on the subject of job interviews. You know, I'm sure it's a great interview with lots of good information. But I guess the communication diva didn't know that she could have just asked me, since I also have a great deal of experience with job interviewing. I've probably been involved in at least 40 interviews during my career, and that's not even counting the jobs I didn't get. Hey, this is Jen Swanson, and welcome to episode 75 of the Communication Diva podcast. This is the podcast that hopes to help you to improve your communication skills so that all areas of your life can be richer and deeper. I hope to entertain you. I hope to bring you interesting uh, guests who have talents and skills that they would like to share with you. And, uh, And I hope to connect with you as well at some point. So thank you very much for listening in whatever way you happen to be listening through the computer um, with uh, with a headset or whatever it is you're listening with, and um, I am uh, I'm glad that you're here. So today I am going to be responding to a request from a listener who sent a message through SpeakPipe, the little uh, button on the right hand side of the website you can click on and send me a voice message. And uh, and Sandra Lemieux sent me a request for an episode to do with interviewing skills, and so this is my Uh, my attempt to respond to her and to help her with the question that she had about um, ideas and advice around interviewing. And so I will turn you over to Anna and our conversation now. So here I am at a place called the Turkey House and Deli, having just had a a delicious snack. And uh, I am here with my guest, Anna Payton, who is uh, going to talk to us today about interviews and things that people who are going for interviews should be aware of. So welcome, Anna. Thank you very much, Jen. It's great to be here with you today. It's great that you can make the time. You've been jet-setting all over the place, and you're off again. And uh, it's wonderful that you had a, a few minutes here to hang out with me for a bit. Always my pleasure to spend time with you. <laughs> Thank you. So I have recently been through a couple of interviews, one that wasn't, uh, wasn't successful and one that was. But interviewing for the church, I have learned, is a very different experience because the people interviewing were not necessarily professionals and, um, and were not necessarily management people or human relations people. And so that was a very good learning for me that it was so different. But in all my years working at the hospital, the people that I was interviewed by were you know, experienced interviewers, management people, people that had some training in this. And one of the listeners to Communication Diva called in and asked for me to do an episode on interviewing because she too was was, um, in an interview that didn't go so well. And so I thought um, that you used to work for a big corporation, TELUS, right? Correct. And, uh, and had a lot of experience interviewing people and hiring people and that you would be a good person to talk to about um, what interviewers are looking for and maybe to give some tips to the listeners who might be heading off for an interview. Happy to do so because I've been on both sides of the table as well. With a career of 40 years, uh, you've spent a lot of time being interviewed and then uh, the better part of my career was also interviewing. So I've seen both sides and it can be a very intimidating process both in some cases for the interviewer as well as the interviewee. So it can go both ways. So before a person even ever gets to an interview, what are some things that they should consider or be thinking about? always know about the company 
or the individuals you'll be working for or with, try and find out as much information as you possibly can. You can do that now through the magic of, of the internet. Uh, in the quote-unquote old days, it was a lot more work. It meant picking up the phone or networking with people to find out about a company or going through uh, various research organizations to find things out. But with the, with the fingers working the keyboard for the internet, you have uh, got so much information available to you about the company and the principles at the company. And so you've got lots of time to find out what their net worth is, what their gross sales are, what their value is on the stock market, if they are on the stock market. Uh, really important to know a little bit about the principles of an organization. They may not be interviewing you, but it's really important to find out about the people that own or run the company from the CEO downward so that you have a sense of the culture. And the culture makes all the difference to finding out whether it's going to be a fit. Because you may work really well with an individual at the, at the working level, but if ultimately the culture doesn't really work with who and what you're about, you're in a losing proposition from the get-go. So do your homework. Find out as much as you can about the company. And that's a tool to impress. A tool to impress knowing uh, that that may come up in questions that are going to be asked of you. Um, people expect you, when they're, when they're interviewing a potential candidate, they expect you to have done your homework. So if you haven't, if you know nothing about the company, strike one right off the bat. Really important. It, would it be important to make a personal connection with the company as well? I mean, you can look things up on the internet, but it, would it be important to go visit the company, or is that sort of a, something to be careful about? I think uh, depending on the, the type of company that you're going to go for an interview for. So if you were going into a retail environment, whether you were going to be a clerk or a manager in that organization, you want to do your homework about that retail chain or that store. So yes, easy enough to walk into that situation. However, if it's a, a telemarketing organization, difficult to do. But what you can do is call in and do a little bit of snooping. Uh, receptionists are a great resource. If you call into the main switch or the main phone number of an organization, you can get people to chat by just being your happy, pleasant self, um, undemanding, just doing some research, interested in your company, and it's amazing what, if you express interest, like at a good cocktail party, you can get people to talk. And you can learn a lot and use that, leverage that within the conversation and the interviews. So, so knowing that, and even in, in a healthcare setting, I know that one of the interviews that I was participating in as a panel, uh, part of the panel of the interview, um, was was knowing um, the purpose of, in this case it was a hospital, and knowing the purpose of the hospital unit the person was coming to interview. It was a palliative care situation, but the person had no idea what palliative care was. So I understand the benefit of, of doing that research and learning. And even hospitals have mission statements. Same with uh, any organization. You can go, often they're posted on the web. Uh, they have a web presence. Um, they're often in um, uh, financial documents that are public information that you can find out what their mission statement is, what they're in the, in the way. If we look at TELUS as a great example of that, there are imperatives that we uh, align with. And if those, any of the work uh, that's undertaken by TELUS doesn't map to those imperatives, it's not work that's going to get done. It does not hold value for the company. It does not further our mission and our values. And people work with a, a very clear set of values and to those imperatives. Their personal work goals are, are directed by and mapped to those, those same imperatives. That's really important. And uh, if you don't know what those really mean, um, you're b way behind. You've got a lot to catch up on. It's really important to find that out about a company. So a lot of research beforehand. And then um, what about going into the interview? What about, um, what about how you dress? Uh, a great question. Gee, it's a hot summer day, and I'm going to be walking into a business organization and you don't know what to wear? Well, by all means, put on your business uh, smart attire. 
never show up unless you're going to become a lifeguard or uh, a job at the beach. Never show up in shorts, flip flops, and a t-shirt. So always be appropriate to the uh, target market, shall we say? The business uh, again, it speaks to the culture of a business, um, but always dress business smart as a minimum. So dress slacks. Clean shoes, closed toe shoes. That goes for women too. Um, not always great to walk into a, an interview with a high heeled, open toe. Looks like you're ready for a party, not for a business uh, discussion. Uh, so, clean fingernails, clean hands, uh, clean hair, uh, presentable, fresh face, um, makeup certainly appropriate to the environment. Again, never overdress, so don't go dressed up in a tux for a man. Don't go in a party dress for a woman. Dress up business smart. So whether that's a casual jacket over top or a lovely cardigan for a woman over a blouse and skirt or dress slacks, don't have to spend a lot of money. And if there are those out there that really don't have the money, to find good clothing, and that's the people that need the jobs the most. There is an organization called Dress for Success, and I encourage you to find out more about how to get in touch with Dress for Success. And there, there are donated professional clothing that will assist you and give you that one step up to go for an interview wearing that business smart uh, attire. Uh, how you present yourself physically is as important as what comes out of your mouth. That's good advice, and I will put that link on the website for Dress for Success, um, for sure. Yeah, because what you wear, and I've talked about this before in other episodes, what you wear is a communication. And so, um, do you have any recollection of times when you sort of wondered about what someone wore to an interview? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. The... Um the, the positions uh, within our organization ha were mostly clerical that uh, at the time that I was interviewing for, or customer service representatives. And uh, sure, on the job, once you're employed, there may have been a more relaxed view in the summer, so there could be shorts uh, for the guys or shorts for the, the women, um, never see-through blouses, never singlets for the men, always proper shirts. Um, but when you're going for an interview, you don't want to make that assumption. So you want to always dress a little more uh, professionally than you think the job might demand. So always, always dress for what you aspire to be. So as you present yourself, you're applying for a position today as a telemarketer or a clerical position or a business analyst, but you aspire to be a director. So dress like a director, always. Always go the step beyond. Well, that's good. And then when you walk into the interview room, what is the best uh, first impression? Because I know that it's, what, six or seven seconds that people make their first impressions in, and that's a lot of pressure. So what is the best way for an interviewee to uh, make their first initial entrance? Extending your hand for a handshake. Uh, you are the person who needs the job. Be professional. Extend yourself. And uh, then that immediately sets a very professional tone, uh, male or female. Uh, a woman can give only her fingertips if she's more comfortable with that. But a full grip from a woman uh, is always welcomed by an, an interviewer so that they know uh, that there is confidence. And, uh, yeah, we all get sweaty palms. Don't worry about it. Uh, it happens to everybody. It's very acceptable. It may be, feel a little uncomfortable, but don't worry about it. Extend your hand. Stand tall. No slouching. Give direct eye contact. Never look away. Never look away. Staring is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about good positive eye contact. A little bit of eye movement is fine. Yeah. But when you're first, and that first, as you say, within 10 seconds, the interviewer is already sizing you up, what you're wearing, how you present yourself. So the full package. And so when you're extending your hand, it's eye contact and immediately say, thank you for seeing me. I'm Anna Payton. Right. Say your name right. and uh, thank them. Thank them. Yeah, I'm aware that, that that's a North American standard, and that um, so some listeners around the world may have uh, a little bit different cultural um, expectations around that, because I know in some countries you don't 
uh, do eye contact or shaking hands. There's other things like bowing and that kind of thing. But because we're here in North America and that's where we're coming from, um, that is really good advice because it is expected here um, to uh, to have direct eye contact and to the handshake is the universal uh, first greeting. Yeah, and just to add to that on your point that mm-hmm. you may have an international listening audience, yes. which I think is very exciting. And and if you are going to an interview in another country. Mm-hmm or into another um, organization that may be sponsored or owned by another country uh, or people from another country, by all means, do your homework. Find out what would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So if you are being interviewed by Japanese, there would be a lot of bowing. Mm -hmm. And in uh, in India, again, the, 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 uh, the customs are very different when you're meeting people for the first time. And there's a lot of acknowledgement of understanding. But when somebody says yes in those cultures, it does not mean they agree with you. They just understand what you're saying. So be very careful there. Do your homework. Mm, Comes back to doing your homework. Right. So um, are there other things that interviewees should be uh, ready to answer in an interview? Yep, there are some key things to, to remember. When you're talking about yourself, there will be situational questions that will be asked of you by the interviewer. And answer them truthfully about what your personal accomplishments are in situations that can demonstrate your skills. Situational uh, answers in quest- to questions coming from the interviewer paint a picture of your c- capabilities. When they talk about team, there's no I in team. So again, listen to what you're being asked. So if they want you to respond with, uh, how would you handle a group situation as a team leader, then it's not so much about um, the team itself, it's about how would you lead. But if they ask you in a large group, what would you do with a team, la 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 la, you need to respond with how the we would be executed, uh, not the I. So listen very carefully for those responses. Uh, You can also expect to be interviewed by a panel. The panel may consist of more than two people, or it can be a single person. When it's a panel, you can count on the questions being rotated, and somebody will be writing down responses. That's very common. And uh, don't be shaken by that. They're just busily taking notes. And um, if you can't think of a situation to respond to a, a, a question, uh, ask to come back to it. Be respectful of the fact they've asked it, but offer to come back to that later in the discussion. Because what you may find is that you've answered or will answer that question in a response for a further question. Okay. So don't be shaken by it, because it all comes out as it should. So, so in order to not be surprised by a question, are there one or two questions that are always asked in an interview? That's pretty situational to the type of work you're applying on. Okay. So if it's a customer relations or a customer service environment, yeah. How do you feel about uh, a customer swearing at you? How would you handle that situation? Or um, if it's a job where you are leading a team of people and you are uncomfortable speaking to large crowds. How would you handle that? And those will be the questions they'll ask you. So how would you handle a situation where you're presenting to a a group of 100 people or making public uh, speeches on our behalf or whatever? So again, doing your research, what will you believe the job to entail? And don't be shy about asking questions. You have an opportunity to do that too. So if there's clarity needed in a question, ask a question before you respond. You just say, I I need some clarification and respond that way. So do your homework and then the normal questions will always revolve around your contribution, your successes. They'll also ask, what is your biggest challenge? What areas are do you believe you're lacking in? What skills do you think you want to advance? So there's there's ways of finding out and and getting a sense from the uh, the interviewer is going to look for any weakness in the interviewee. And honesty is the best policy. So don't try and snow the interviewer. Uh, never 
embellish because often if they're doing reference checks and conversations with people you may have worked with in the past, uh, that could backfire on you badly. Yeah. So be prepared to always be straightforward, uh, talk about your own successes. And uh, so, yeah, back to the original question that you asked, Jen, is it, is there, are there some certain questions that you can expect? Really be able to talk about yourself with confidence, about who and what you are, uh, what you aspire to be, and what your contribution might be to the success of the company you're being interviewed by. So. That's, that's, yeah. One of the things that I talk to my students about in class is about the question that, that can be phrased in many different ways, but what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, or what are your successes, what are your challenges? And, and you know, I do say to them, you know, if you tell somebody that you're too organized, that's not a challenge. That's not a weakness. That's sort of couching, um, you know, some great ability that you have to be organized uh, as a weakness. And that's a little bit dishonest, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. I think uh, uh, you're being a little bit, uh, shall we say, overly humble. Yeah. And it's obvious to the interviewer where you're going with that. What yeah. do you mean you're overly? Are you, are you uh, OCD? Yeah. You know, those yeah. are the yeah. kind of responses you're, they're going to think, well, what's the matter with you? Yeah. So when uh, in the interviews that I have uh, done, uh, if I ask the person, what is, would be your greatest challenge uh, coming into a job, say, in the compliance area of, uh, of, our, of an organization? Well, if they say, well, my biggest challenge is going to be actually to understand all the various uh, new uh, environments for compliance, whether it's financial compliance or regulatory compliance, or, and, and knowing that they're not fully schooled in all of them. That's a fair, fair response, that that's going to be their true weakness. Um, if, if they are in a clothing store applying for a clerk's position to sell clothes and their greatest weakness is they can't look people in the eye and they don't know how to sell, oh, now we have a bigger problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Do, you have, uh, do you have any stories around uh, interviews that you've conducted that haven't gone so well? You know, we had a situation, this is uh, many years ago while we were merging between uh, TELUS Alberta and BC Tel, and we were re-interviewing people for their positions that they were already working in because we couldn't keep everybody. We were looking for other places to put people once we had surplus, but we were rejigging between the provinces. And uh, one, uh, we advised the people that they could bring in some talk notes. And they were fairly relaxed interviews. They were uh, a panel interview. And one person brought in a notebook. And for every question we asked, they referred to their notebook. And that was the most off-putting thing I'd ever experienced. <laughs> I was so busy wondering when she, which page she was going to flip to, I just checked out. I was not interested. She was very qualified. And, and in the end, we, we did keep her. Um, but boy, oh boy, that was a real interesting challenge because it was very distracting, it was very um, uncomfortable, so it didn't really let me see or feel who that person was. I wasn't listening to her responses anymore, I was more intrigued with the fact she'd written a book. Um, so uh, that was an unusual one, and uh, I've, other than that, I've got to say most people uh, really step up to the plate, they put their best foot forward. Uh, I, I have not experienced it firsthand, but there have been situations in certainly major corporations where people's credentials don't pan out. Mm. And so be very um, careful that you are not overstating your qualifications or falsely uh, documenting anything, because uh, that can really backfire on you. And, and subsequently, those people had been fired mm. from uh, our organization because they'd misrepresented who they are. Mm. So I haven't had any other real unusuals. People are, are often nervous, and, and I've always done my best to help them relax, because uh, I've been at the receiving end too, um, being interviewed to keep my job um, through the merger, and, and those are very unsettling times. They're very scary, and uh, your livelihood's at, at risk in your whole career path. So, yeah, it... Uh, Really, people are sincere most of the time, and, and I encourage you to, to be sincere as an, as an interviewee. Mm -hmm. Always go with an open mind about the company you're going to go hopefully work for. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's one thing that I, I just want to mention here, Jen. 
you may be aspiring to be a director and they may even ask you, where would you like to be in five years? And you say, well, I want your job. Uh, you know, and that gets a good chuckle. Yeah. But um, have, be realistic yeah. about your career path and the track you're going on. Um, two years uh, fresh out of school, um, two years in an organization doesn't mean you're ready for a directorship. Doesn't mean you're even ready to manage a large group of people, depending on the experience you're bringing with you. So be realistic in your expectations. Don't overstate, and also uh, don't put out a very large number of expectation of salary, because uh, that could also uh, be very off-putting for an interviewer that you've already stated what your expectation for a salary is and not a penny more. Um, very off-putting. Very off-putting. Does it require a certain degree of humility um, as an interviewee? Always. With a touch of confidence. You need that confidence because otherwise you can't sell yourself with, to be genuine and true with that kind of confidence. But humility, absolutely. Uh, if you've had a very successful past that you're bringing forward into the conversation to discuss in situations and, and your track record, uh, a good reason to be hired is based on the, those successes. But it, did you really do it all by yourself? Always be truthful about the role you played and that the, there were people there that helped you. Because the people that were there helping you are also still your network and they'll always be there for you as your network if you give them credit as well. And those can be external to the organization that you're applying on uh, for a position at. So just keep that in mind. I, I um, a, a, a humble uh, presentation uh, with a touch of confidence is always far more attractive to a potential employer, always. That's good to know, yeah, because when you see sometimes these resumes that I see, because students will give me resumes to check over, and, and I see, you know, excellent communication skills listed at the top of many, many of them, because that seems to be a thing, and I say, well, wait a minute, if you have such excellent communication skills, you probably don't need to write that down, um, because everyone thinks they have excellent communication skills, and, and frankly, we know that that's not true. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, in these days of electronic communication and instant communication, what does that mean? Exactly. So truly, uh, writing down that you have excellent, communi excellent communication skills, to me, immediately says, are you a good writer? Or are you a good speaker? Or none of the above? What does that mean? Are you a good texter? Yeah. Are you a good Twitter? Yeah. Are you, do you have an active Twitter account? I don't know what that means. Yeah. It would leave me absolutely cold. It yeah. would mean nothing. I, if somebody had that written there, I'd be a little more uh, critical of them in how they presented themselves, quite frankly. It's setting an expectation that they're articulate immediately. There's no not a lot of ums and ahs in the in the pauses and the like like likes. Uh, the slangs come yeah. into the language. Yeah. So stay as professional as you can, yeah. even if it means practicing your opening few lines right. in the mirror right. to an interviewer, so that an interviewer knows that you you you've actually got a little bit of polish and demonstrate the communication skills. That's a really strong point. Right. Yeah, thanks for reminding us. <laughs> well, that's good because I I, uh, I see that repeatedly and I always question them and they sort of roll their eyes at me. But I say, really, I'm not sure that this is a wise thing anymore to be including on resumes. Years ago, perhaps, but as you say, with all of the technology and everything, it could mean multiple things. And you could be amazing at sending texts or emails. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, what, what does that mean? Because communication, as, as we know, is such a broad, broad category. Well, that's great. Um, so I think I've, uh, I've asked most of the questions that I have. What are interviewers looking for? That's a, a very, very broad subject. It almost starts the, this conversation all over again, Jen. I... To put it in, in a succinct yeah. statement, I think an interviewer is always looking for someone who's personable, can communicate uh, their, and express themselves or, uh, with an articulate response without a lot of left-right turns, circular turns, uh, right to the point. You don't want to be wasting an interviewer's time. And they'll only give you so much time. That's true. So 
be straightforward. Uh, we're looking for that clarity in responses. We're looking for energy coming from the person, enthusiasm, and knowledge about who we are as the company you've come to to seek employment. So those are the big keys for us. That's great. Um, my daughter has what she calls her ninja interview question. And I actually used this last time, and it worked really well. <laughs> And her, her ninja interview question at the end, when, it, when people say, what, you know, do you have any questions, is she says, what are you looking for in an employee? What do you think about that question? You know, you almost, as the interviewee, want to be asking that before you start. <laughs> Can I ask one thing first, please? But uh, I think that's a fair question uh, because it leaves you, uh, the interviewee leaves that person who's worked so hard at getting the interview, because getting an interview is hard work, mm -hmm. never mind executing the event. Mm -hmm. So knowing what the interviewer and the organization is really looking for in a person is very helpful to know where you are when you leave. So I think that's a fair question. I don't know how much detail an interviewer would go into, but uh, clearly if it hasn't come out through the questions mm -hmm. and if, that, if there hasn't been clarity, uh, I would be a little worried that uh, the interviewee hadn't picked up what the, the company was looking for because that meant that the interviewer was keeping things very close. Mm -hmm. And uh, interviewing uh, as a process is a two-way dialogue. Mm -hmm. You want it to be a two-way dialogue. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't gleaned that, uh, a fair question to ask. And, and uh, so responding with what the, uh, the company is looking for, whether it's uh, high energy, someone that is free to travel or not, or loves being confined to a chair for eight <laughs> hours a day, or is super knowledgeable in a particular aspect of the business. Uh, that uh, so there there may be other elements that they they would reveal at that time, and they'd be dependent on the kind of business it was that you were applying on. So. Yeah. Great. Well, I thank you very much for all of this wonderful information. I'm sure the, the listeners out there will be most appreciative of, uh, of this conversation. So thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much, and I wish all your listeners much success in their next interview. <laughs> thank you. So there was my interview with Anna Payton, and I am very grateful to Anna because she was in between coming back from being overseas and uh, about to go off again across Canada to visit family. And so um, it was lovely for her to take an hour out of her busy life to, uh, to spend with me and with you. And uh, so I appreciate that very much. It's been an absolutely glorious summer here, and we've been spending a lot of time recently out in our yard. We have um, quite a big yard that has um, not had a lot of good care in the last while uh, before we took it over. And, um, and so we've been outside getting a lot of vitamin D through the sunshine and, um, and doing some, uh, some work, some gardening, some digging. Some, there's a pile of rocks in the driveway that have to be moved. And so uh, it's been quite nice to be out there with uh, the birds and uh, all of the noises and uh, the fresh air and the trees. And so I'm looking forward to uh, doing that again, uh, maybe later on today. I wanted to, um, to just say before I sign off that um, if you would like to have a one-to-one -one conversation, um, if you would like some help figuring out uh, how to get ready for interviews or um, if you have a life change coming up or if you just want some some help thinking things through, I do have a coaching practice that is open and uh, I have space for two or three more clients at this point and, um, and I would be happy to have a conversation with you about that. And so if you go to communicationdiva.com forward slash slash coaching, um, you should come to the coaching page. Um, you can also find it at the top of the website in the tabs at the top. There is a, a tab called coaching and you can read a little bit more about what it is I offer. And, um, and then there is a 15 or 20 minute free chat to see if we would be um, able to work together. So take a look at that page if you are interested in, uh, in having some one-on-one -on -one time 
And uh, I would be happy to have that conversation with you and see if I can help you to determine your goals, help you to, um, to move towards them, and to cheer you on towards, um, towards a, a more fulfilling life. So there you have it. Until next time, this is Jen Swanson. I thank you very much for taking the time out of your day. If you have any requests, any questions, any comments, or you just want to say hi, you can send a, a message through the voicemail uh, button on the website. You can come to uh, Jen, J-E-N-N, at communicationdiva.com, which is my email. You can find me on Facebook, Communication Diva page. You can find me on Twitter at J-E-N-N Swanson and then the number two. Um, yeah, so, and you can comment directly on the website. So any way that you would like to uh, connect with me, I would be happy to have a conversation. Until next time, take care.